Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And uh, I, you probably watched the giveaway video that I, I do a giveaway video every month. One of my supporters wins a knife every month. And uh, guess what Simon chose for himself? Simon from Denmark chose the Penguin XL. Yes, the nice uh, shredded carbon fiber with the uh, foil copper in the handle scales. I've shipped it off to him and hopefully you should get it soon. I was surprised uh, shipping to Denmark, not all that much different from shipping within Canada. It's crazy. I can ship stuff to the US for cheaper than I can ship stuff within Canada. It's just, it's just nuts how shipping's going crazy in Canada. And that's just using Canada Post, you know, and other vendors are actually more money even though they claim to be less, at least from what I've found so far. I, Sure, go ahead, send me links for companies that you think are, are less. I've probably checked them out already, but maybe I haven't. Maybe you know something I don't know, because I don't know everything. I know something about knives, though. Again, not everything, but I know something about knives. This is a knife by RHIE Design. This is a knife by RIHE Design. It's got a Tigand brand. Don't let that turn you off. At least not completely. <laughs> I am not fond of Tigand. I've reviewed uh, two or three Tigand knives and I really wasn't impressed all that much. I wasn't really, you know, negatively um, unimpressed. But you know, these are the okay knives. But RIHE doesn't make their own knives. Uh, they've got a number of nice, really cool knives from Tucson. Yeah. So check out this brand. This is the RH288. I can't find it by Tigand anywhere online, but you can buy this directly from RIHE. I guess he bought a whole bunch of them and he's selling them on his own website. And uh, under 40 bucks, $39.90? Yeah, $39.90 US. I believe it's free shipping within the United States. So yeah, I think they ship just about anywhere though. This is a uh, axis lock, a crossbar lock, whatever you want to call it, flipper, D2 steel blade, G10 handle scales, and guess how many colors you can get this thing in? Black! Yeah, you can get it in black G10 and D2 steel with this Bowie style blade. Do you want to know more than that? Probably, so come on down. We'll go to the tabletop and take a good close look at this knife and I'll tell you everything I know about it. And I'll even, I won't do a tear down this time. I just hate reassembling access lock knives, but I will take a handle scale off to show you some, a little bit of how it works. First, I did buy this knife, so uh, this is not a freebie. I bought this knife, and uh, let's take a look at it. Like I said, you've got this buoy-shaped blade. We've got a clip point here with a swedge along most of it. The last, you know, quarter of an inch, a little bit more than that, you know, does not have a swedge. So it's a fairly strong tip right there. Flat grind. We've got a flat section up here that's easy to clamp onto if you've got a guided sharpening system. We've got a fuller in there, both sides. A little bit of jumping on the spine. What does Jake say about jimping? Give me more, give me more. I like more jimping coming down a little bit. You know, it's not a huge deal. I generally have been playing with this knife, testing it, using it this way. Only occasionally I put my finger up on this little, you know, that little sh spot right there. It's not really a forward grip, but you can sort of use it that way. And even then, you know, the jimping's almost enough. So you can hold it back here if you need to, but it's okay. And uh, let's get fingerprints all over this shiny satin finish. We have a stone wash on the flats. There looks like it was bead blasted before it was stone washed. And then inside the fuller, you know, the stones didn't quite reach in there. So just down the middle, there's a little bit of stone wash. Kind of looks a little bit odd. Um, and that's one of, it's not a con. It just, it just seems a little bit odd to me. Maybe if, you would have, maybe if they would have gone in later on and cleaned up inside that fuller, made it a consistent finish, it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect the functionality of it at all. The sharpness choil, you know, it looks kind of really deep, 
but it's just barely big enough coming into the blade after the plunge right there, but totally acceptable. I like that. You can sharpen this knife a number of times before you'll run out of you know the forward uh, the sharpener's choil. Badging. Well, the tag end on there, well, I'm not sure what they lined it up with. If it was supposed to be in line with the grind line starting up there, then it's a little bit tilted, a little bit curved off to the side a little bit, but at least it's not too in your face. It's Well, it's a little bit too in your face, but it's not crazy bad. And on this side, on the main bevel here, uh, I wish maybe if they would have printed that inside the fuller, you know, same thing with that tag end, maybe put it inside the fuller, hide it a bit. RHE design, RH288 D2 steel. So there you go. How well does this thing cut? It's okay. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. It's not bad, but it's not great. Handle, what do we got? We've got a pin. I th Does it go in the other way? Did I put it in the wrong way? I did take this knife completely apart once. Uh, and uh, I might have put the pin in the wrong way. Who knows? I forget. Uh, T8 screw here and T6 recessed button screws. And I'm singing that old song. I don't like T6 recessed button screws. Nice body pins. They're not super common, the exact shape, but basically it's sort of an hourglass shape right there. We've got a pocket clip. We've got a pretty nice pocket clip. Except for the fact that they made it right side only. We've got a fully ambidextrous knife in every other way, except for you can't put the pocket clip on this side. Uh, I don't understand why. I just don't, well, here, let's, let's take that apart first. Where's my T6 screw? Put my BC3 back there. The screws, you know, don't have a lot of play in it, just a little bit, but let's take this out. There we go. Got the screw out. There's no thread locker on it. Wiggle it out. See, there's a hole. And there's a bit of a notch right there. You can see that notch? They could have easily just left the little notch right here so you could put it on this side as well. It gets covered up anyway. You know, if there was a notch there, who's going to see it? Because you can't see in there. You might barely see it, but... That's just a lost opportunity. Lefties would have loved it if you could put it over there. You know, then when you put the pocket clip back in there, it covers that up. So I think that's a big missed opportunity, but it's a nice clip itself. You know, righties are gonna like this thing. It's a deep carry clip and it's made out of a nice, nice piece of steel, sinks all the way in. Uh, let me take a still picture of this first and then I'll show you how it goes into a pair of pants. Okay, here we go. So a nice spoon end comes in and sits there. It tends to hide the knife fairly well. There you go. Looks good, works well, holds on with a good tightness. I'm happy with the pocket clip for the most part. I just wish it was left friendly. The G10 handle scales, there's 3D melt, slightly rounded, it's thick and straight in the middle. Uh, not as, you know, the corners are broken slightly. It's, it's not a, a crisp edge here, but it's not a rounded over edge on the G10 either. But we've got, you know, a swell coming this way, ever so slight swell. And we've got a swell going this way, you know, in here, here. It's fairly comfortable in hand. It's, it's not great, but it's not bad at all. Um, We've got a big hole for the lanyard right there. Really nice and big. So that's pretty good. Uh, we don't have any skeletonizing on these. The steel liners, they're not thin. You know, they're not the thickest liners I've seen, but they're not all that thin. They're quite strong and durable, but there's no skeletonizing at all. The balance point is right there. Some skeletonizing would have helped bring that balance point over here a little bit more. That would have been nice. Uh, you could skeletonize these yourself at home if you've got a drill, at least a little bit. Uh, that's okay. It's not a big deal. The access lock here, the lock bar, check that out. Those posts stick out further from the handle scales than almost every other access lock knife I've 
ever touched. You know, that crossbar is wide on there. Lock engagement, you can see that dark line in there. That's pretty much where it goes up to. So fully engaged, you can actually see part of the uh, blade coming back out this side of the bar. So very secure bar lock. It's just these posts, you know, the edges are a little bit crisp and it's quite big, but it's easy to use. Flipper, well, we've got jimping on the front of the flipper, but you can pretty much do that light switch method only. If you try just pulling off to the side, it tends not to work. You know, some flippers, you know, you're sort of doing a pull off to the side when you do it. You basically need to go straight on and do a light switch method. Uh, if, you're, if this is your only knife and you're not rotating between knives really quickly, uh, then you might get used to doing it, you know, slightly differently, like from the side like that. Uh, but quite often I pull this out of my pocket after I'd been carrying something else and, you know, I put this in there and then I try to use it and I'd find that I just didn't like how it flipped out because, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. It's leaned back and stuff. So I don't quite know. I'm not totally sure why I didn't like it that much, but there's something about that flipper I'm not that fond of, especially when it turns into a guard when the knife is open. Then I wish the edges here would be broken on the sides, like that it'd be chamfered on the sides a little bit, and it'd just be a little more comfortable that way. Not a big problem. It's okay. It's, it's decent enough, especially on a knife that's just under 40 US dollars. Let's take one of these handle scales off and I can show you the springs and everything in there. There you go. Uh, there's no Loctite on these screws. But there was a little bit of something on there. I'm not sure what it was. What's a little bit different than a lot of them is on this end, the spring doesn't have a hole that it goes into. There's a notch there. So you can see that there's, you know, that notch and you just put it into there. It's very easy to put in there. Like sometimes if you get a hole, you got to line it up just right and that's not any fun. But the hook that goes, the spring that hooks around this crossbar, it's properly shaped. It's sitting in there properly, nice and well done. So that's kind of good. And then you've got a captured stop pin on the blade and it's totally internalized this notch on the liner. So it's not open on the front. So well done. D-shaped pin right there. Here in the G10, you can see that notch right there. I can't see why they couldn't have done that on the other side too. That just doesn't make any sense that they couldn't have done that. Found a con while I was putting it back together that I didn't find the first time I put it back together, and that is, you know, while the screw head's pretty good, it fits in there quite nice, I can just turn it indefinitely now because the other side just turns along and there's no way to hold it. Uh, so I'm not sure how I got it done the first time. I don't know if they use some kind of thread locker or something in there or whatever, but it's not tightening up. I've tried, you know, doing the, the real sudden jerk. Sometimes that works if you can just try to really quickly spin it, you know, and then it sometimes takes a bit of a thread grip and it turns in a little bit more. Nope. <clears throat> Thanks for playing. So I'm not, I'm even less fond of the clip now well, the fact that you can't mount it either way and whatever, and this fold-over design without a hole really doesn't give you the chance to properly tighten that up. But one screw here, one body screw, one pivot screw, I've got that on a lot of knives and it works just fine. The con part is that maybe this screw could come loose and then you lose the pocket clip or lose the whole knife or something. So, yeah. Other cons, I'm not sure the heat treat on this thing's all that well done. Uh, hopefully I can get a good picture of it, but here on the belly of the blade, sort of just as it starts to come up near this flat area, I've got a several little chips or little bends. You know, I haven't looked at it closely with a microscope or anything. There's a little bit of edge damage there, and it wasn't from the factory, so my testing has damaged the edge of this blade a little bit, and I don't do rough testing. I don't do, like, destructive-type testing. I use it like a guy would normally use a knife. And so that's not that good. It cut fairly well, like I said before. It wasn't great, it wasn't terrible. It was just, you know, okay cutting. So those are the, 
those are the main cons. Uh, the edge of the blade here, and this, and what else? Uh, the T6 screws I already mentioned. And that's about it. Some of the okay things, you know, there is that stone wash that's only in the fuller. You know, that's a cosmetic kind of thing, not a big deal. These pins come out a little bit further than they need to, but they work. You know, you can use them. You can deploy the blade with them too if you want to. I'm not getting the wrist action quite right because I'm underneath the camera. I don't have a lot of room here and I don't want to hit anything. Yeah, it's okay. And of course, I wish for a little bit more jimping, but that's just the way things go, right? All right, now let's do these measurements. The weight of this knife, 115 grams, 4.06 ounces. So it's a four ounce knife. Sharpness from the factory, 160 best. So pretty close to average. The uh, cutting edge length, 88 millimeters. That's uh, 3.46 inches, good size blade. Uh, tip of the blade to the closest spot on the handle is 90.5 millimeters, 3.56 inches. The thickness of the blade, 3.18 millimeters, eighth of an inch. Uh, blade depth, the widest point is actually right about here. And that is 23.3 millimeters, 0.917 of an inch. So you got almost an inch of blade this way, which helps with the strength and everything. The thickness behind the grind, so that's the edge grind, the sharpening grind. 57 millimeters, 22 and a half thousandths of an inch. That's thicker than I prefer. I prefer a maximum of 20 thousandths of an inch thick right there because every time you sharpen almost any knife in the world, you're going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. And you, you know, thicker means doesn't cut as well. The grind angles, the average grind angle along the length, this side 19.6 degrees, this side 20.9 degrees. This side started at 23.6 degrees, ends at 18.2 degrees, so 20.9, almost 21 degrees. This side started at 21.2, ended at 18.0 degrees, so 19.6. This is 3.2 degrees of change. This side, 5.4 degrees of change along the length of the blade. It's not preferred, but it's pretty average for factory-made budget knives these days. The angles you get if you buy one, I can guarantee you are going to be different because these are hand sharpened. You know, imagine a wheel turning right here or a belt. These are hand sharpened. So every knife is gonna have a different angle. I'm just telling you what these are to give you something of an idea of how well these were factory sharpened. The uh, length of the handle here, not counting the pocket clip because it sticks out further. The, uh, G10 or the liners right here, 114.7 millimeters, 4.52 inches. The grip area, so, you know, using this guard between my thumbnails right here, it's right around 9.7 centimeters or 3.8 inches. The thickest part of the handle in the grip area, right in the middle, you can see that G10 green, 14.15 millimeters, 0.557 of an inch. So a little thicker, but it's thinner everywhere else, and I don't mind it thicker there. The thickness is actually very, very good. The handle depth, the widest point within the grip is right here in the middle, 23.7 millimeters, 0.933 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is with the flipper, 26.3 degrees, 1.04 inches. And the total length of this knife, this time including the pocket clip, about 208 millimeters, 8.19 inches. Pretty decent dimensions, the specs, you know, all that stuff, pretty good for this knife. What are my overall thoughts of this thing? It's okay. If I didn't have any doubts at all about the heat treatment, I'd say this is a good knife. But I can only say it's okay, because I, I have some doubts about the heat treatment on here. It might be good. I've, I don't have a hardness tester. I can't test it. So all I can go is from the experience I've had, which of course is subjective, just like every other reviewer. You know, it's subjective. That's the one person's opinion. And, um, you know, I wish it was better. I really do. The design's got a couple little quirks that I'm not fond of, but overall, it's an acceptable knife. If you want to get one of these, I've got a link down below to make it easy for you to get them. Uh, the only place I know of right now at the moment that I'm making this video is directly from RAHE. 
And uh, like I said, $39.90 US. Thank you to my supporters again. I appreciate you guys an awful lot. If you want to support the channel, patreon.com slash cce or click join down below. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.